I am Sarah Nemtsov. I'm a composer living in Berlin. And this is Sebastian Hanak. Sebastian, you are a stage designer, also costume designer, um, and working in all fields of performing arts. Um, I think one can say you are among the most prominent and successful artists in your field of your generation. And um, yes, you've uh, created stages, stage designs for um, renowned houses, opera houses, theaters, festivals, other institutions, I guess. Yeah, your works are very unique. Your stage designs are also very diverse, which is really impressive. You try to cross boundaries in your work. Um, recently, you're also interested in uh, augmented and virtual reality. Maybe we will talk about this later also. We both met in 2016 in uh, a collaboration at the theater house Halle, Opera House Halle, uh, mm -hmm. in Eastern Germany. And um, I got this commission to write uh, a new opera, my opera Sacrifice, uh, on the topic of radicalization, radicalization in different directions. And um, well, it was the first uh, year or season of this new directing team with uh, Florian Lutz and Michael von Zomühlen, uh, Veit Güssow, and you and Florian, you've worked together a lot. So I, I got, uh, got to write this opera and you did uh, the stage, but it was very special uh, because um, you built this so-called uh, so Raumbühne Heterotopia, um, a space stage. Uh, mm -hmm. to, you used the whole theater, uh, you overbuilt the whole theater, and I think it was um, used for seven or eight different productions, which is quite uh, unique, I think. Um, mm -hmm. It's rather like a theater installation or something, and there were operas, uh, theater, ballet, um, and other performances, concert also. And um, so this concept already existed when I was composing. And you, mm -hmm. I mean, usually it's the other way around. You write something and then a stage director and um, yeah, and a stage designer would answer this. But here um, I could uh, really compose for your architecture. And uh, this was really a great experience for, for me, very inspiring. And it had a huge impact also on the score and uh, compositional aspects and decisions I made. You got the Faust Prize, uh, the, it, mm -hmm. it's a renowned theater prize in 2017. And mm -hmm. yeah, I think I'm not alone uh, with this. I, I thought uh, your space stage, Heterotopia, was really spectacular and uh, very far from the normal um, theater experience with a yeah, picture framed stage and uh, very immersive, uh, very different also in the different production uh, production. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can talk a little bit about this. Also, I actually never ask you how did you come up with this? Uh. <laughs> At first, thank you for having me. It's very interesting to have this talk together with you about the production that we created such a long time from now ago. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's very interesting to go back. Um, together with Florian Lutz, we had the idea already earlier on with another opera we made, Hans Heiling by Marschner, where we also invited the audience uh, on stage and to participate uh, within the um, process of the music theater and also to be within the music, to be within the choir, um, which were completely around uh, the around 100 people that were allowed on stage. And we had um, another production, um, that we, that we had so many um, possibilities on stage, which was a normal, uh, like, Gukasten Theater production, mm -hmm. which had uh, a lot of possibilities from beginning to the end. And uh, at the end of the opera, we were thinking, oh my God, there are so many possibilities still left, what we could do with the space. We could uh, continue at the end of this opera and do another opera within the possibilities that we do have because it was also a more abstract stage mm -hmm. and these two things coming together 
worked really well for the idea of an opening of a, of a new um, intendant in Halle. So mm -hmm. as a director and also as the intendant, he had the idea to conceive something that originally, originally was, uh, we started off with Flying Dutchman from Wagner. Mm -hmm. And then we thought, it, but it would be great if other people could join. So we would ask uh, the people from the Schauspiel, we would ask, ask the people from the ballet department. And more and more we realized, okay, it would totally make sense to also make other productions possible within this space because it will be so big and we can only play this en suite. We could never uh, just build it up because the, the setting up time for this whole um, Raumbühne or, or space stage was like five days in the end. In the beginning it was uh, like two weeks until we had everything together. So this is what we did. We started with the Flying Dutchman where the orchestra would still be in the pit Mm -hmm. And we had uh, railings all around so the audience could co go back and forth. Mm -hmm. And um, then later on, when, when we were conceiving a Sacrifice together, also the idea was where to put the orchestra. Mm -hmm. And this was very interesting because we, we had the possibility that the former auditorium, where we had this platform on top, we could mm -hmm. easily, because there were no fixed seats, we could easily mm -hmm. just take out everything that was there. And then uh, as this podium, it was possible to ha have it half stage, half set design, and also half a huge place to, to be for the orchestra. Mm -hmm. Plus being them on top of the, uh, of the orchestra pit podium that we could later on uh, lower at the end of the opera. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this was also for us something new because also in, in this dimension, we, we only just, um, let's say, invented it at this time. Um, mm -hmm. But it was really, it, it came from this idea that it would be possible that you lose this, this mono perspective that you mm -hmm. would have if you'd see, sit in your, in your seat in the auditorium and everything that will move is just being in front of you and it's a bit of an another experience of uh, of musical theater that um that you only have one image let's say in front of you mm -hmm. plus the music and and now that you could also move within the space and also mm -hmm. within the music let's say or mm -hmm. be moved as we did in in sacrifice that mm -hmm. the auditorium maybe just to explain they would sit on the turning stage mm -hmm. and it was conceived for around 150, 170 uh, spectators. Mm -hmm. And they were being moved by um, the revolving stage mm -hmm. and, and thus um, come to very different images or into a stream of images and sound. Um, so we would have, let's say as, um, as the one composing the images together with the director and also together with, uh, with your score, we would really have to have um, a plan of where do you, s in, in which direction are you looking at which point of the opera? And it, mm -hmm. it was also very easy to just turn your head. You would see 360 degree an image and sometimes something happened behind you plus in front of you and at the site something was prepared, but it, there's mm -hmm. nothing that was actually hidden. At least for, I mean, for sacrifice, everything was happening around the mm. audience, but um, at least they were together, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, there was mm -hmm. something like a central view still, although it was mm -hmm. really 360 degrees around them. And I had mm -hmm. the, um, yes, I had this chance to compose this also, like you would hear something behind or on the side or uh, even above. <laughs> we used mm -hmm. this and 
sometimes also, I mean, you remember, we, uh, it was also not always pleasant for the audience because there were this claustrophobic uh, moments also, and they were, they couldn't decide themselves. They were being moved. Um, mm -hmm. So they were mm -hmm. kind of in, imprisoned also on this revolving stage. But this was, also, mm -hmm. of course, also um, something like uh, a reaction to the topic in a way or uh, mm -hmm like a like a decision in this way um, but uh, the flying dutchman fliegender holländer by wagner um, i didn't see it live unfortunately but um, mm -hmm. as far as i understood i mean there was where you really abandoned also a central perspective so uh, some yeah. were sitting between musicians some and it had also political aspects like some were sitting behind a fence and didn't get the good view we had the whole a choir moving around mm -hmm. and um, also a lot of extras that would also in that sense take care of the audience as, as we had certain um, parts within the opera where the audience could also participate so they would ask the, the audience to particip participate in this, uh, in this sort of uh, Volksfest or party um, when the sailors return. So this mm -hmm. would be a huge party where everybody could get uh, something to drink and it would be really like a Volksfest and you're within. Mm -hmm. um, and um, as you said that we also had um, audience on the side stage and they were sort of um, abandoned in, in this area. Um, this was interesting uh, in, the, in the later part of the Flying Dutchman with this ghost choir, so that there would be an actual fight, not between uh, a ghost, um, as conceived by Wagner, uh, but actually bet between people that the society would be very frightened of, you know, like mm -hmm. people you, you want to shut off in a certain area. Mm -hmm. um, and, and this was very interesting that, that this fight, for example, took place from both sides of the fence so that uh, part of the choir um, would react from that side and the, the other part of society. And also, um, because this was at the end of this, uh, of this Volksfest party, that everybody suddenly was involved in this situation. So you were just drinking uh, your, your beer and uh, having a sausage and suddenly, uh, due to the music, um, everybody was involved in this situation if you want it or not mm -hmm. and uh, this was very interesting because it was a it was somehow a, a physical thing that you you couldn't just step out or close your eyes or, or think oh it's not so interesting together with Wagner because we we're just among this or in the middle of, of this action mm -hmm. And yeah. did, did the audience really react to the political aspects also? Because, I mean, it was 2016, it was in the, yeah, yeah there was this so-called refugee wave. I mean, yeah. all, all these discussions, also the uh, rise of the right wing, especially in Eastern Germany also. I mean, it was a huge topic yeah. anyway in this region yeah. Yeah. and in Germany and also abroad, of course. But um, this was referring to this, I guess. It was, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but not in a, I mean, the interesting thing is once you don't have it as an image in front of you, uh, but the idea, it, it wasn't that uh, around you there were people as refugees only. It, it was more mm -hmm. that you were being made refugees and at a certain point only with this ghost choir, uh, you realize that there are, let's say, others um, who, who have, a, in the end, let's say for the opera, who have a voice, yeah? who, mm -hmm. who respond to what's happening. Because in the end, what we did is, of course, we just picked up the thread that, that uh, uh, was also an idea, and also maybe uh, especially in Eastern Germany at that time, that of course the people were very unsatisfied with this mm -hmm. uh, situation. Yeah? And they didn't want uh, these refugees to be here, and, and they also didn't want to have this, this discussion. And, and um, at least mm -hmm. at the change maybe, and also at least not right in front of them. Mm. And also, since everybody in, in the opera, uh, on, only if you sat in the former parquet, in the former auditorium, everybody got costumes when they were mm. on stage. Ah. So they would have like felt blankets and mm -hmm. some uh, African printed shawls and so on. So it, it, 
they were also as an image for everybody else they mm. were made into something with their mm. private dress underneath so it the idea was very clear that they are uh, they are not refugees they are just uh, taking part within this uh, 400 people auditorium social experiment if you want to yeah. put it like okay. this you know yeah, because like, everybody mm -hmm. was taking part within this especially since if you were in the in the in the house in the back together with the women's choir everybody could wear like uh, blonde wigs you know just mm -hmm. to have this weird idea of uh, housewife staying home waiting for the husband to arrive you know and mm -hmm. everybody else uh, on stage would have this uh, um, this Bauarbeiter Helme you know these mm -hmm. helmets um, as being part of a working society or, or of being part of, uh, of normal working class and so it was pretty obvious or pretty uh, let's say um, easily um, deciphered as an image uh, mm -hmm. that, that you could um, ver read very easily as an, as an audience from every other uh, uh, viewpoint. So for the audience it wasn't even so clear who is audience member and who is part of, uh, of the choir or soloist. And, and that was very interesting I think um, also to have a new idea of how this idea of Stadttheater yeah? mm -hmm. or of the, the, this idea of a, of a theater that is explicitly for the society of this city you know? mm -hmm. and, um, and not just a, as an imagery in general. It was very mm -hmm. important, I think, also for the start of this Intendance of Florian that mm -hmm. we sort of opened the doors and let everybody in, you know, mm -hmm. and also cross yeah. boundaries um, between the genres. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really, you were imagining many different formats and really inviting the people of the, of the city. And I mean, yeah. as for, for the title of, of your stage, Heterotopia, Foucault meant like different other spaces, right? That illusionary spaces mm -hmm. and that um, they... Yeah, they transient spaces, spaces, I think, in a way um, that they are... Um, that the the idea of this space isn't as fixed, you know, like like cinema. A cinema is only mm -hmm. a cinema if you show a film. Otherwise, it's just mm -hmm. a, a bunch of seats and you look like nowhere. Since we use the very same set design, but mm -hmm. from very different perspectives and with different genres, it was really interesting also for the audience at this moment that they could also see the space alter its meaning. Mm -hmm. I think this is this is the very idea also what I would think for this idea of why we called it heterotopia mm -hmm. and it also it's gives, still somehow the same yeah and it gives also maybe a, a freedom for them of perception in a different way in their very individual Absolutely. way then if I remember correctly with the Foucault thing with the other spaces um, his idea was also that these different spaces um, with their uh, own truth or own story or own mm -hmm. um, rituals, um, uh, they are also uh, very um, important for the freedom of a society and uh, for democracy in a way. Um, yeah, and yeah. If, if we think of this, I mean, now we have this uh, whole discussion about culture during the uh, Corona pandemic. Mm -hmm. If it's necessary, mm -hmm. if it's only entertainment or was it, what is the necessity of culture in, in general or the role mm -hmm. for society? I mean, in this way, uh, would you think that a theater space or arts in general are like heterotopic places? Of course, I mean, uh, since uh, the the idea of the of what we are um, telling on stage is always changing, and and also, but also reflects what's happening in reality. I think uh, this makes it uh, a very heterotopic uh, idea of uh, like in general. How how do you decide? what you know what image do you give coming to an essence sometimes of course leads to an image that is 
either very simple or that is that that is very um, in an abstract way on point of uh, what you are trying to say you know like for example what um, the image for life of Galilei from Brecht mm -hmm. it's like very geometric frames within frames yeah? mm -hmm. and for me it, it was the idea of there is very little space to play for the actors and also for the director. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he found the idea super that they don't have so much space and that we are mm -hmm. very near to the audience. Mm -hmm. So we had this set design on top of the orchestra pit. So everybody mm -hmm. in the front row would see the piece like this. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that was very interesting because you also, uh, there, there was not, not uh, this weird distance that you sometimes have if if you have the the orchestra pit and then the portal mm -hmm. and then like 12 then meters away off. is yeah. the first singer yeah, or actor engage with the audience in that moment as well yeah. even if it's not yeah. a space stage but uh, yeah. just how you set it and it has an impact on the uh, uh, on the view and what the audience yeah how they would probably react like even if yeah. only physical. Yeah, and then I think for especially what I'm what I'm trying to do then with these more abstract set designs is that there is a sort of certain mechanic to it mm -hmm. that you can have changes uh, throughout the image. So, for mm -hmm. example, then with these frames into frames mm -hmm. uh, that we were using for Life of Galilei, they could move. You know, you could mm -hmm. bring them together into one flat space. Mm -hmm. And then we would project on on it, but depending on which frame we would open into the depth, very small and different spaces would emerge mm -hmm. where the where the uh, different scenes would play, and only and at the very end we were opening all the frames into the whole depth mm -hmm. for the very first time, like the the last five minutes, and it was really incredible because for the first time you would see 50 meters and you would oh. see Galilei leaving this. Mm -hmm. and, and this came totally out of the piece of Brecht and also out of the very interesting story of, uh, of Galilei that in the end, he left a knowledge behind that would change everything. And so you uh, really put this inside your stage design in the set. It's like the ideas really inside it and also the drama dramaturgy of the piece and how you decided to open yeah. it, open the space when you to hold it and hold it uh, small for a long time yeah. and then suddenly in the end open it um, to yeah. uh -huh. a whole new dimension. Um, I mean this bring, uh, brings me also to um, to the topic of time in general for, mm -hmm. for your work. Also um, I myself I'm thinking a lot about it because um, Usually, music uh, is thought of as a temporal art, mm -hmm. temporal mm -hmm. art form, of course, I mean, mm -hmm. um, whereas uh, something like a painting or sculpture or something like this is a spatial art. Um, and uh, of course, I mean, music does uh, evolve in time and uh, has a certain uh, time frame um, and a painting or such thing is, is free of this um, but from yeah I, I don't like like this so much to go with this ideas because for my own compositions I like to think of uh, Zeiträume like spaces mm -hmm. of time and mm -hmm. maybe you you remember in Sacrifice for instance I had mm -hmm. this uh, orchestral moments in all in every act actually Mm -hmm. All four acts um, uh, where um, there was no no text, no singing, no action mm -hmm. planned at least. I mean, Florian did something mm -hmm. with the people on stage maybe, but uh, for mm -hmm. me, uh, the orchestra was uh, was the character. and mm -hmm. uh, But it wasn't an intermezzo or something. They, mm -hmm. they weren't intermezzi. They had more time. But for me, it was not only about time so much, but rather about the space, like the orchestra got the space. And mm -hmm. also in the music, um, I, I like to think of um, this Zeiträume, um, like a sonic space where you can mm -hmm. move back and forth um, 
and it's not so important how you count the time outside it's rather uh, how you uh, listen to it or imagine it inside and uh, and these um, orchestral moments and sacrifice I call them Klangbilder sound images mm -hmm. and I had I had this idea that I I start or I try to I try to create some immediacy in the beginning of each Klangbild uh, mm -hmm. to have something like a new uh, nucleus um, uh, like an uh, like in nature's you know like the fractal uh, patterns mm -hmm. and then give it uh, some time or space to unfold and and it takes mm -hmm. it takes the space so um yeah this was one idea but it's also in in other pieces that i i think of uh space in inside my music also with polyphony mm -hmm. for instance mm -hmm. and this is my utopia utopia mm -hmm. um that uh yeah to to create something like a polydimensional musical space where you can go back and forth and also in mm -hmm. um i mean of course if you sit and listen there is this time frame but if you remember music or imagine music it it's completely different again in any way music has so many time layers but um the stage design uh i mean this is something in between right stage design would be something in between temporal and spatial uh between mm -hmm. continuity and something static or fluid and fixed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so how do you cope with the time i mean especially um in this in these uh, mechanical set designs, it's um, it's very easy to um, to create a sort of uh, dramaturgy going from one point and ending somewhere else, or, mm -hmm. or really um, uh, turning. For example, just to give an example, for um, Kabale und Liebe from Schiller, mm -hmm. I did the set design where it was only like a like a vertical revolving stage. And within this, there was a very, very small space. And this, this was also the, the very small space where we would uh, begin the whole piece where the, the main actress, Louise, would be standing and, uh, and having a monologue. And from then on, everything evolved um, around her. And, and so this whole set design, this whole turning uh, stage would be something that from the very beginning on would start to, let's say, to put her under pressure. That's the whole thing about, uh, 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 or the whole problem, let's say, um, or especially for me uh, in, in this whole uh, story of Kabale und Liebe, that they, in the end, they won't come together with this idea, like this Romeo and Julia idea. Mm -hmm. how, how do you decide for colors? Or what role does color play for you in your mm. design? Actually, especially when I do these very abstract sets, I mostly go for one color, which is a very coldish or grayish white. Mm -hmm. Because you can easily turn the, this on stage into every other color that you want. Mm -hmm. But the other way around, um, it's, I found it very difficult to say, for example, um, this life of Galilei, if it were red, I wouldn't think that for the whole uh, um, evening, red would be the right color. So I found the, the idea of having a, um, a very, let's say, uncolor uh, <laughs> that I would use on the objects enhances the idea of it being abstract or being an, an object. You know, mm -hmm. because you would always re relate in, in a certain color, you would always relate also to a realism because you would think, oh, it's yellow, like how nice, you know, or, or mm -hmm. red is like, oh, how, I don't know, how, mm -hmm. how strong or, or mm -hmm. blue, how cold, you know. And this made it very easy also to always use um, video projection on mm -hmm. these walls or on these objects or elements, which was always part of um of a of of the narration or of mm -hmm. uh, sequences in between that you could easily just use it as a as a surface for projection mm -hmm. 
and uh, your your plans with augmented reality. What is what is it that fascinates you or now especially? I mean, what interests me now, or what I what I mostly see is um, when no actual performance can take place. Is I found interesting in augmented reality that through this device of a, of a cell phone that we carry with us, you can explore something that suddenly, since it's technically possible, that something you can re relate in a, also together with a human scale or playing with a human scale. You know, suddenly you can mm -hmm. see something that is, I don't know, some quartet that is playing and they play on your table and you can mm -hmm. sort of explore uh, with your iPad or with your cell phone and since it uh, overlaps with the actual reality of your private space or with you being in the train or, or wherever mm -hmm. and and this I think theatrical moment that we could create if we had if we do see actors or we see something that is uh, that is corresponding um, to, to the sort of privacy or private reality that I do have. Mm -hmm. It's sort of, there were some things that, that actually touched me and I, I found mm -hmm. this is something I only experience otherwise if I, I don't know, watch a movie or if I go to the theater, something mm -hmm. like this. And, and this I found super interesting. Yeah, it's this, uh, on the one hand, it's, it's a different, um, aspect of hybrid life, mm -hmm. hybrid society um, in, in our world now, but also what I have to think about is that it's this um, kids fantasy. I, I think about mm -hmm. it like this sometimes because mm -hmm. you have children also, or maybe if you remember your childhood, I had this imaginary friends, you know, and then mm -hmm. you always have this fantasy, oh, this character should come out of the book and just have mm -hmm and have some chocolate mm -hmm. or some you know and this is some you know the the kid inside is probably like waking mm -hmm. here and mm -hmm. you have this string quartet you can have on your table and watch it and kind of yeah play with it a little bit and uh, feel free i mean this is also mm -hmm. the freedom again art can mm -hmm. create then but also imagination and fantasy and i think one thing uh, for for this augmented reality what is also um, interesting is that you do interact yourself you know it's not something that um, uh, that you are uh, that that you are shown on your device and mm -hmm. uh, and you have to wait two hours until it finishes but you can explore within your own time and with with your own interests and mm -hmm. um, I think this interactive moment that you could uh, if, if you, you could walk around, for example, um, uh, a string quartet, or if you could walk around uh, the whole orchestra, this for me digitally would transform a bit of the idea of the, of the idea of a space stage, let's mm -hmm. say digitally, um, mm -hmm. because you are free to roam and you are also free, even more free within your own time frame, to, um, to find or to, to, to look for certain areas that do interest you. What I was wondering, how important is music for you in your work? Very. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's really very uh, uh, important to me because I realize what you were also saying earlier, how do I, how do I find a way um, within uh, a piece coming to a set design it's very important for me the the to have a music because having the music for example when i listen to an opera for the first time which i'm going to do i sometimes try to listen to it when i don't know it uh two or three times just without text mm -hmm. because if i know the text i, I mean not maybe not for a german opera but if I sometimes just can have an idea of the musical ductus, it's very interesting because you you get an idea of the time frame uh, when happens what. Or for example, okay, now there is a ten minute musical interlude. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. This is a time. This is more or less a time where um, 
it gives me a lot of freedom also together with the director uh what do we want to tell within this time mm -hmm. and also why did the composer uh put this in at, at this mm -hmm. certain point and then i also find very interesting uh when i listen to the music for the first time with the text that i think ah i didn't know that they would sing uh this to this mm -hmm. music because sometimes it just doesn't go together you mm -hmm. know uh, yeah. or not in a bad sense but it, it's mm -hmm. uh it's meant to be like this and i think oh interesting i wouldn't have come up with this idea and um and and this also tells something about the structure and helps mm -hmm. to to understand what um what correlates or what um what we could do with our work in in reviving this idea because most of the time the operas that we do work on is like from 400 to uh, 50 years old mm -hmm. and i mean i know at least one <laughs> modern opera like a uh, contemporary opera you did the stage uh, what is the difference like when a composer is still alive or something well, the, um, mostly if, if we do uh, these world premieres, uh, it's not only that the composer is, uh, is still alive, but that the opera is not finished when we do the design. Okay. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's hard <laughs> for me I remember this, to listen yeah. to the music, you know. I see. This, is, okay, this is really yeah. one thing that I can only imagine um, how would the music sound or, or you can tell me, I think these Klangbilder, they would sound like this or mm -hmm. I mean something like this, you know, mm -hmm. but of course, uh, th this work is much more anticipating mm -hmm. and, um, also sort of going, uh, going back to, um, what's the general plot uh, that we want to tell, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. especially for our work, I think it was very interesting because this uh, this came together very well because the set design somehow already existed so we had to put in perspective or anyway find a way mm -hmm. it wasn't um that our first idea would be everybody would be on the revolving stage it could also have been differently but this was the most interesting thing for us mm -hmm. um to be able to tell this in within uh, a stream of images mm -hmm. and it was and, also um, i could compose it like this that I, yeah. in the score yeah, yeah. was something like a singer, a voice from behind would start and you would see the orchestra in front and then the journalist on the side would do something and some sound from there would come or you would yeah. have this uh, silent choir doing noises just behind in the back of the audience. So yeah. this was really yeah. in the score. Yeah, uh, no, that was great. I think this, this is... Uh, how it ideally would work, you know, that uh, mm -hmm. that there is a possibility of um, reflecting another work or, or seeing how things uh, evolve. It's also very rare, you know, because usually you would compose your opera and I would uh, uh, design my set. And at mm -hmm. a certain point, we do come together because we rather rarely there's the possibility of having workshops together or to mm -hmm. really experiment, you know. Yeah, that would this be is great. Something it would be great and i think this is this is something that i really miss somehow where i realize that nowadays is it's very hard within these uh, strict rhythms mm -hmm. of uh, of a, of an opera house that there is very rarely any place of um like a year before uh, the world premiere we'd all meet and and listen to the first 20 minutes or or, mm -hmm. or come up with ideas or you know Yes, that would be this, so this. so needed much more of space for a, a true collaboration and also for this experiment that you don't, because of the, uh, the deadlines and everything, you usually now have to just ha have a solution immediately to bring something yeah, yeah. that is set. And it would be really great to have just more trust and more space more time but of course what does it mean it would mean more money for the institution to give not to, to spend um yeah but maybe sometimes it's also um that artists need this courage to just say i need this or to contact yeah. each other early on i mean it's all always such a fragile moment i know it for myself if you yeah. start working on some things on the one hand you're trying to get all this inspiration and everything from outside and uh, but then also at least i need also 
to be very much for myself and kind of yeah. to to uh, have this vulnerability possible i mean it's it's very true that there is this moment of fragility and i don't think that it's uh, that it's even good if at every certain stage uh, of of production people come together and and mm. throw 100 ideas into the pot i also made Absolutely. experiences myself with the contemporary music that if nobody um let's say really goes ahead and says this is the libretto you know then there is also because i think what is also very interesting in a, in a collaboration is that you of course you're not always um um you, you don't always agree with with what everybody brings in you know mm -hmm. you might like the set design or you might not or you can say mm -hmm. oh, these 10 minutes of music i don't know what to do with these you know mm -hmm. but i think it, it's a uh, but these 10 minutes, let's say, they need to be there because I find it very productive in any way, in any production, ballet, opera, contemporary or ancient. I find it very, very interesting to also have something that I have sort of to cope with or to deal with. This makes it also very mm -hmm. interesting, you know, because I can also okay. ask myself, hmm, why, do, why don't I like this so much? Or, or why doesn't tell me, doesn't this tell me something at least, mm -hmm. you know? But I find this very productive because it uh, it, it sort of generates a very interesting energy. Exactly, you know? I love this also, and uh, I yeah. I'm looking in my work. I'm always looking for such things, even if I don't have a music theater. I'm looking for other aspects, aspects yeah. or oh, texts yeah. or whatever, just input that triggers things yeah. or even dislikes, and then I get to work with it, and I come mm. to some place in my art where I haven't been before so that I mm -hmm. I renew myself and get ideas mm -hmm. I wouldn't have otherwise and, and then there, there's also this counterpoint possible and this can be very energizing maybe also for for the audience or uh, what you said like the music doesn't go with the text or uh, the stage doesn't go with the story or whatever the plot mm -hmm. but it's a it's mm -hmm. a counterpoint and then it opens mm -hmm. a space you wouldn't have otherwise and it's also a space of freedom for the uh, for the audience uh, to Absolutely. interpret and to be also in this yeah. way even if it's not a space stage to be part of uh, of the whole artwork in a way no i think it's very good if, if the, uh, there is also something uh, that is contradictory as for the audience uh, to what you say about interpretation yeah that mm. that how do you how do you conceive how do you read uh, um, what's going on on stage together with uh, all these elements of light and mm -hmm. singing and music and <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 